Hello and welcome to another video of E2 tutorial. In this video today, we would learn how to use a software called dBeaver to do some very simple SQL exercises. In one of our previous video, we used Google Colab um, to run some SQL select statements and showed you how to set up SQLite on Google Colab. So this video would basically be centered on a software called dBeaver and would kind of do almost a very similar um, exercise like the Google Colab. I'll show you how to import the database into dBeaver and then how we can perform um, some simple SQL queries or should I just say some simple queries. Um, starting off, we're going to be using the very popular Chinas database. Um, you could see an image here of the database with I think around 11 tables, which it has. Some genres, tracks, artists, albums, employees, customers, and so on. Those are some of the tables we have in the database. And we could also see the relationships with the different cardinalities, you know, one-to-one, -one, many to many, and so on, or one to many. And we could also see um, the, the, the primary keys, right, for some of the uh, database. So on my right hand side, we have our dBeaver software open. So if you have installed this um, software, please go ahead and open it. If you do not know how to install it, I have a previous video um, that I show you how to install dBeaver on, on your computer. So what we'll do here is import the Chinook database into our dBeaver software. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go to file, new, and then have it on database connection. Next, SQLite, next, open. And then I'm just gonna like that and then click on finish. So once you do that, you would see your database under connections, all right. Okay, so, but in terms of our agenda, these are the four different things we want to cover in this video today. The first would be to view all the tables in the database. So we want to be able to see all of these 11 tables that are showed here in, in, this, um, in this photo, right? And then we also want to retrieve um, data using a, a select statement. We look at how to retrieve multiple columns. And finally, we look at how to limit the results from our query, right? So or we could say, look at how to limit the result sets, right, <clears throat> from our query. So now I'm just going to right click on the Chinook database, SQL Editor, open a new SQL script, all right? So our first task is to view all the tables in the database. I'm just going to put a comment there. OK, good. I can increase the font size so that you can see it properly. OK, so the, the dash dash line allows us to put a comment in our, um, uh, in our SQL code. So we'll use this. Select name, and then type. Um,
So, so basically what we're just trying to do is to view all of the tables we have in our Chinook database. So you can either click on this play button here that says execute SQL query, or if you're using a MacBook, I believe you could click on control and return, right? In order for it to output the result. I can't really remember what keys you have to um, use on a Windows um, computer, but the play button would also be there. So just click on this play button um, and it would, it would show you your output. Another way you could see what um, uh, what the what the keyboard shortcut would be is to go to the SQL editor, and you could see it here to execute query, right? Um, for uh, for Mac, it's Control and Return. For Windows, once you click on the SQL editor, you would see what the keyboard shortcut um, will be. So I hope that's helpful. All right, so let's do this. Okay, so. Here we can see all of the, the tables, right? Um, just kind of disregard this second um, row as well as the last row, right? But basically we should have 11 um, uh, tables. So albums, uh, tastes, customers, employees, genre, invoices, invoice items, media type, playlist, playlist tracks, and tracks, right? So that matches all of the tables we have here and our SQL, um, uh, and our entity relationship diagram, which is called ERD, right? So it matches everything we have here. So now that we have that out of the way, the next thing we wanna do is try to answer um, question two, which is retrieve data with the select statement, right? So our tax there is to search for the composers of each track, All right? So basically we need to, our focus would be on the track stable, right? That's basically where our focus would be because when you look at the track stable, you can see that one of the features or columns we have in the track stable is the composer, right? So we want to um, search for the composers of each track. So we'll would say select, select, and then we'll use the asterisk, which calls all the um, columns we have in a table, all the features or the attributes, right? However you want to um, put that statement. And then we we'll say from, remember, tracks. Right, so so we could run this. All right, so now we can see the track ID. We could see the name of each track, right? And then we can see the composer, right? These are the composers of each track. So basically for track one, the composer is Angus Young. Right for track two, it doesn't have a composer, but track three, fast as a shot, right? Um, the composer is F Bout and um, S Kaufman, um, U Dex Schneider and W Hoffman, right? So those are the composers for each of the tracks that um, that we have in the track uh, table. So that's basically how we answer question two, right? Now we move on to question three, which is to retrieve multiple columns, right? Um, which is very similar to what we just did in, in uh, in question number two, right? So three says, how many columns do we have in the track table, right? So you might not really want to do another um, query. We could just basically count the number of columns we have um, in this table. So also you can easily just see that answer from um, 
from your ERD. So, so here we have nine. So let's see if we have nine here too as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. So we have nine, um, nine columns in. in our track table, right? Which matches what we have in our ERD or entity relationship diagram. Okay, so our last one would be to do a query that limits the result, right? What is the name of the gift track composer? Okay, so before I do this one, um, this is just basically a challenge out there. It's a, it's a very pretty simple challenge, right? Um, you could also write a query that can count the number of columns for you um, in the track table, right? So my challenge to you is, Right, that's my challenge to you. So we could also write that and you could just count all of it and we don't have to start physically counting them, right? So that's a challenge for you. The other um, little uh, thing I wanna show you guys, right? You know, when we did the first, um, when we did this one to view all the, the tables in the database, right? Another way that dBeaver helps us to look at um, all the tables we have, let's say you don't have an ER an ERD, right? You could click here on this small arrow here, right? And then it shows you tables. And if you click on the drop down, you can see all 11 tables, right? Albums, that taste, customers, employees. So if you don't remember this SQL code, right? You could just go over to your database, click down on it, click on tables, and you see all of them, right? Very easy and um straightforward. I think those are some of the things that makes me um, love this, this software, um, DB, apart from the fact that it has a lot of other um, uh, SQL databases in it. So, you know, Postgre and so on, right? All right, so let's get back here. So what is the name of the fit track composer? <clears throat> So basically we're focused on the tracks, right? And we just need to look at the name of the fit track composer, right? So we, we, have the, we have the tracks open up here. We could just basically see that, hey, the fit track composer, which is Princess of the Dawn, is DC and RA Smith Diesel, right? That's basically it. But the other thing we could do is we probably do not want to see all how many hundreds of of tracks that we have, right? So we could just write a, a select statement that just limits, so from tracks, right? That would basically just limit the, the result set. So we just say five, right? Because we're interested in the fit track composer. So if I run it, you could see now that we have just five five rows, right? We don't have um, hundreds and hundreds of rows, right? So we can now see that our feed track composer is Diffy, right? Um, Diffy and our that A Smith diesel, right? So you can write that down somewhere as your as your answer, right? So that's how you, you could do that. And then the last one, which is what country is the sixth customer from, right? So now we're looking at the customer table, right? So we need to bring up the customer table um, or do a query to bring up the customer table. So I'm just gonna say select all the columns. That's basically what the asterisk stands for or, or all the attributes. Then 
from customers. And then I'm just going to limit it to the sixth, the first six um, customers. So once I run that, so you can see the first six customer, the one we're really interested in is Helena, Helena Holy, right? And we can see her address, we can see her city, which is Prague, uh, her country. So she's from the Czech Republic, right? So that's basically what we're looking for. So that's that's how we use um, DBVAR to, to, to write some queries and query a particular database and have the result sets um, shown, shown to us. So I hope this video was helpful um, to kind of help you get started and familiarize yourself with some of the um, uh, queries or select statements and how SQL has been used. Um, please make sure you like this video, give it a thumbs up and also subscribe um, to the channel if you're not subscribed. Thank you so much and see you next time.